There are certain types of people who seize opportunities or ignore them. Those that seize them are automatically connected to their greatness that is hidden in their DNA in the form of potential. They're usually multi-talented, multi-gifted, and they make the conscious decision to go through difficulties so that they can pioneer change. Those that fail to recognize opportunities make an unconscious decision to remain where they are. They resign their lives to underachievement, and they end up remaining where they are, stuck. I've discovered that these people are risk adverse. These are those who decide to not explore the terrain of risks, and therefore they're the ones that have made their past their prison. They may sense the tap of opportunity on their shoulders. However, they give in to the imposter syndrome that tells them to ignore the open doors, perhaps that they're not good enough and someone is going to find out about them. And instead of walking through that door of opportunity that would usher them into the realm of greatness, they live a life of average. There are three categories that humanity falls into. In this message, I'm challenging you to decide which one of those categories you fall into and to take a personal assessment of yourself based on your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, and visions to determine whether or not this is the best category for you to go through life in. And if the answer is no, I think I need to shift, then this message is a message that's going to help you to do this. This is going to make a major difference and a big difference in how you show up in life and how you seize opportunities. So let's get started now. Hey there, welcome back. We are in installment number five. Time does go by when you're having fun. I want to turn your attention to Genesis 19, 17 to 23. I'm kind of settled in that particular scripture as it relates to opportunity. Um, and I want to read it in its totality so that you can have context for where we're going with this installment. The scripture says, and it came to pass when they had brought forth abroad that he said, escape for thy life, thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lot said unto them, O oh, no, so, my Lord, behold now thy servant hath found grace or favor in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast showed unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me and I die. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. This is what I can control, but out there, it's too much risk. So let me avoid risk. This is what he was saying. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city for, th for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore, the name of the city was Zor, and that's translated insignificant or even average. The sun was risen upon the earth when Lot entered into Zor. It's interesting because God was giving him, him an opportunity or a lot, an opportunity to turn a new leaf over in his life. And there's a saying that God is trying to write a new chapter in your life. Stop taking the pan from out of his hand. And it's so true. There are three types of people in this world. They're pioneers, migrators, and settlers. The pioneers are actually people who push humanity forward, industries and communities forward in the process. They are the out-of-the-box thinkers. They are, in fact, people that don't think outside of anybody's 
else's box, they create new boxes that other people think outside of. These are the people who actually tap into their potential and they become great. They perceive opportunities that other people overlook and they are prepared to take the risk. So when we deal with that word risk, I uh, believe that one of the greatest definitions that I've ever heard is risk is happens when you act and you cannot control the outcome. So that means the outcome is uncontrollable, is out of your control. Now, people say, my God, uh, you know, I don't think I wanna live a life that's out of my control, but glass half full or half empty. If you look at the glass as being half full, then you'll begin to understand the blessing of risk because those of us that are believers, when we talk about the just shall live by faith, another word that is synonymous with faith is actually risk. However, if God is leading you, we know that the outcome is going to be success. It's going to be prosperity. It's going to be, be growth. It's going to be greatness. We know that because God has plans for you. They are plans to prosper you. And they're not plans to cause your demise. And so if the plans of God is leading you into a terrain of risk, that means that you could trust God for the outcome. And I often say, what if that outcome brings uncontrollable success and uncontrollable prosperity? Would you take the risk? If you are a man or a woman of faith, that means that your life is going to be lived by faith. And so if God is giving you an opportunity, a lot of people look at the opportunity and say, well, what if I end up losing? Or what if I end up failing? You need to take that what if and change it. What if you end up succeeding? What if you end up prospering? What you take the risk? And I, I think when I look at this story, I look at the story of so many individuals that I run across from day to day. They have these amazing opportunities that heaven is giving to them, opportunities to change, opportunities to love. But they look back on their life and they, they handicap themselves because their past becomes their prison. And they say things like, you know, I've been in a relationship before and everyone has hurt me or everyone has disappointed me. And they go on and they talk about not being able to trust anybody. And when you arrive at that point where you say, okay, I can't trust anything, that translates not only from your earthly relationships, but that translates to God. So when you take the risk, the opportunity actually that provides that level of risk actually puts you pushes you into the realm of greatness and that's where you want to live that that mountain top experience is a mountain top of great influence of great opportunities and just a greater lifestyle a greater sense of well-being greater connections greater success you want to live in in that realm of greatness and this is what opportunity gives you. Opportunity is not a punch in the face, I mean, you know, that you could feel or a punch in your belly that you feel initially. It's more like a tap on your shoulder. One of the things that Sir Winston Churchill said, he said to each, there comes in their lifetime a special moment when they are figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered the chance to do a very special thing unique to them and fitted to their talent. A philosopher once observed, and he added, what a tragedy if that moment finds them unprepared or unqualified for that which could have been their finest hour. And I'm going to throw some another word in there, finds them scared and too afraid um, to take the risk. So when we talk about opportunity, the opportunity that I'm talking about actually pushes you into the realm of greatness. 
The Bible talks about greater is he that is in you and, and than he that is in the world. God promises Abraham, I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make you a great nation. I'm going to make your name great. I believe that greatness is in all of us in potential form, but unfortunately, that's where it remains for the vast majority of us because we don't understand that one door opens to another door, opens to another door, and it continues for the rest rest of your life. And if you don't walk through that one particular door, either because of fear, unbelief, either because you, you think that you are not qualified, or for some people, I think they suffer from um, a, a particular syndrome. And I call that syndrome the imposter syndrome. In other words, you've got this opportunity to, you're already there. But when you look at yourself, you disqualify yourself because you're afraid. You're afraid that if people pull back the layers, they're going to find something less than this uh, facade or persona or brand that you have out there. Well, I think differently because opportunity actually finds uh, greatness in the strangest of people and in the strangest of places. I think of Ruth. She found her opportunity for greatness while she was working in the red light district on Jericho's walls. And she was introduced to two men. What was so spectacular about it um, she actually, her business was actually working with man, but she recognized that there was something different about these two men. They didn't ask her for the kind of service that she was used to providing to man. You know, they were more interested in her brain than her body. And she was introduced to her greatness uh, there. The same thing with David. When I look at David's life, he was actually introduced to his greatness when he had the opportunity to defend his flocks when a lion and a bear tried to kill them. And then later in the midst of a terrorist attack that, that Goliath had launched against his country, he had the opportunity that was given to him and he was introduced to his greatness. I can think of Moses. He actually killed a person. So he would have been an ex-convict for all um, uh, intents and purposes if he had done that today. But he was running from a murder that he committed and in, in a wilderness experience in the backside of the mountain, he had the opportunity given to him and that's where he connected with his greatness. The same thing with Joshua. Joshua found his greatness in the desert um, where he was roaming around um, just in this cycle, one cycle after the other, going nowhere and in the midst of the bereavement or the loss of his mentor, God introduced him to his greatness and showed him, well, you're next in line. I could think of Joseph who was able to have an opportunity to use his gifts and talents. This is not just in the workplace, but after he was falsely accused, um, he had a gift for interpreting dreams. And he interpreted dreams and it was in the prison that he was actually introduced uh, to his greatness right there in prison. And then I think of John the Revelator. He was exiled on an island called Patmos. And he could have been bemoaned the fact that he was falsely accused. He could have bemoaned the fact that he was in exile. He had nothing to live for. But on a Sabbath, the Holy Spirit visited him. He was called up, caught up in heaven. And right there in exile, he was able to write the book of Revelation. And of course, it, it just catapulted him into a realm of greatness. He had an opportunity right where he was, right where he was experiencing um, the greatest amount of um, rejection and he's and loneliness, but he connected to an opportunity for God to download his perspective on world events. And in writing it, we are still reading 
his writings at, that he wrote while he was in exile. I could think of Deborah. Um, she had an opportunity that she found and it connected her to her greatness in, in a sexist profession. For Gideon, it was found on the threshing floor. He, I think he ignored the fact that he was this amazing innovator. He was threshing wheat, wheat in a wine press. He had, he had this great ability for innovation, and he didn't realize how great he was until an a, um, angel was sent to show him. You're, you're not this scared person that you think you are. You're a mighty man of valor. Who would defy the prevailing culture and still try to um, de to um, overcome something that was insurmountable. And even though he never saw himself as a leader and a emancipator and a deliverer and a person who had something to offer his nation, God was able to use his circumstance and situations so that he could connect with his greatness. I think of Noah. He found his greatness when God gave him an opportunity to defy the perversion and the debauchery that was a part of the DNA of his community, the community that he lived in, and that generation that he lived in, and the time that he lived in. And he was able to surmount some very interesting um, socioeconomic and, and cultural anti-purpose, anti-God activities. He was one of the few that, that was righteous and found favor in God's eyes. And then he con God connected him to um, his assignment right in the midst of this anti-God, anti-purpose, uh, anti-assignment. Everything was anti-righteousness, anti-holiness, anti-integrity, anti-morality, anti-ethics. And he was right in the middle of that. And God gave him an opportunity to connect with his greatness. I think about Chanel and the famous creator of one of the most beautiful and powerful brands today. She lived as an individual. She died as an institution. And, you know, hers came when she didn't like the attire that the women were wearing when they were playing tennis. And that that evolved into uh, one thing and another thing and another thing until now she's this iconic figure. And then you have um, the whole idea of Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein was um, rejected and um, he lived actually in Europe at, at that particular time. And we see him as a pioneer where an opportunity was given to him. And you've got to understand, they laughed at his theories. The scientific community in Europe laughed at his, his um, theories and they laughed him to shame. And because of the pressure to conform, which he was not going to succumb to, he relocated to the United States of America. And it's interesting when you read the biographies of these great men and women who are pioneers, what they actually had to go through in order to pioneer the change. And it was in the challenging, the most challenging moments of their life that God divinely connected them, not only to purpose, but to their potential for doing something great. And these all became industry leaders and people that we admire and we study their lives. And so the first kind of person that we're looking at are, are these pioneers, people like Amelia Earhart, uh, people who pioneer like Stephen Jobs, like um, Stephen, um, uh, all of the Stevens you could think of, Michael, Michael Angelo, and all of the great pioneers within their industries, uh, they, they, they uh, are, are usually individuals that suffered greatly, but they did not allow their suffering or their mistakes. They didn't allow people's opinion of them uh, not to see an opportunity within their personal struggle or within their personal pain points. So these are pioneers. And we often look at pioneers and think that they have an easier way than the average person, but they really don't. 
because they, they, they are usually individuals that don't listen to their own hype and they don't pay attention to their own pain or their own discomfort or their own challenges. They just have a connection with something bigger and greater, and that's the seed of greatness. Secondly, you have my graders. Genesis 28, verse 10 to 16, these are pioneers that go beyond a, a, a specific um, boundary line or geographical uh, place or zip code, and they forge new paths that other people follow. And I call them migrators um, because they can't be held in one place or they are not fond of being in one profession or doing one thing because they usually are multi-gifted, multi-talented, left brain, right brain, individuals that get bored very fast and they need to be challenged. So they're not people that have are one hit wonders and keep milking uh, their success. They, are, they, they, they have success in one area, and then they go on to the next, and then they go on to the next, and they, then they go on to the next. And it's almost like they are migrating from one gift and one talent and migrating from one ability to the next ability. And this is Genesis 28, 10 to 16. And I wanna read that with you. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took off the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in the place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascended and descended on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac, the land whereon thou liest. To thee I will give it, and to thy seed, and thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad, watch this, to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed, and behold, I am with thee, and I will keep thee in all the places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep, and he said, surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And so whenever you're left brain and right brain, whenever you're multi-gifted and multi-talented, doing one thing will bore you out of your skull. And so God is going to give you an opportunity, um, like a migrator, um, and this doesn't mean that you will always migrate uh, to new physical geographical locations. It means that you're going to begin to explore all of these gifts and talents, not just in one field, but it may, may be in many different fields. And people will not be able to hold you down because what God will use, he's going to use you to cross-pollinate. And you are going to be cross-pollinated but he's gonna use you to cross pollinate as well. So each one of us are incredibly, incredibly gifted, incredibly talented, and we have many, many different abilities. In fact, when it comes to ability, usually people maximize one or two or three or four or five. And if I interview you and ask you how many abilities do you have, most people would list maybe five or 10, some may even say 20. But if I told you that you have a minimum of 600 abilities, many of which are in seed form. And when I talk about seed form, it's in potential form. And sometimes we look at people who are interested, interested in several things as people that are distracted when in fact they're not. They have an assignment um, given to them by God for them to cross-pollinate and to um, bring changes in many different industries or many different environments, and they're able to uh, push humanity forth. As a migrator, uh, sometimes, you know, 
I think when it comes to the seeds um, that God has planted in, in us, in the form of potential, whether it's a gift or an ability or a talent, uh, we laugh at children when we interview them and we say, well, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And they say, well, I wanna be a doctor, I wanna be a lawyer, I wanna be a dancer, I wanna be a policeman, and I wanna be a teacher. And we say, well, you've got to select just one thing. Well, who says that you just have to select one profession? Who says you cannot be a doctor and a lawyer and a teacher and an author and a writer and a preacher? Who says you have to just go down one lane. Maybe God wants you to be migratory. And maybe God wants you to discover who you really are and your gifts and your talents by taking you in a series of different environments and giving you different career experiences that takes you on this sort of, sort of nomadic journey. When I look at my life, I've had a nomadic journey. If I tell you that I worked in... Um, uh, in the um, medical industry, and in particular, I worked with an uh, optometrist, and I was good in ophthalmology, even though I didn't study it. And then I worked in international banking. Then I worked in government. Then you know I owned restaurants. And if I tell you that I wrote books and I preach. And if I tell you all of that, and I'm really good at design, um, if I tell you all of that, it would seem like I'm a, a, a restless person when in fact I'm not a restless person. I consider myself a uh, genius in the area of uh, spiritual migration. I'm like an Abraham who is more nomadic in the earth than I am a settler. And some of us, uh, you know, we listen to people when they say, well, you need to settle down. You, you, you know, settle down for what? Um, you know, your tendency to get bored easily usually stems from the fact that you are multi-gifted, you are multi-talented. And when you're multi-gifted and multi-talented, you're both left brain and right brain. So uh, left brain, of course, is analytical and right brain is creative. And I'm left brain and right brain. Um, if I put my mind to uh, learning anything, basically, I can learn anything um, and I could do probably almost anything I want to do. Uh, and for me, settling down only means that that's a recipe for boredom. And many of you are like that. It's almost as if God is giving you so much ability, so much talent that it torments you. Um, you need to pay attention to that because God will give you opportunities that are so diversified that if you listen to people, you will never move into the realm of greatness. Um, and again, when I look at Abraham's life, if you read out of the book of Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 3, or even verses 1 to 4, you can see um, from 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, how in each instance, God gave him an opportunity to discover who he was and to refine this, this new person that was emerging. We talk about being introduced to the next best version of ourselves, but a lot of us are so stuck. We never navigate the terrain of our own temperament and personality. We never see, uh, you know, how amazingly gifted and talented we are. And, you know, it's, pot it's, 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 um, it's, probable that, you know, you may be a business person and an author speaker and a scientist and have all of this in the inside of you and God use that. And I call it somewhat um, a, a, a sort of a nomadic kind of existence. And so this is because you have so much uh, latent ability and latent talent, which we call potential and you are going to be contributing to many, many different um, industries and many, many different people's lives. And sometimes the ultimate expression of who you end up being 
will not be made known to the world and your family and may not even be made known to you until you're 60 or 70. There's a scripture that is fascinating from out of the book of Isaiah, chapter nine, that says that God sent a word to um, Jacob and it lit on Israel. So we're talking about you discovering not just the next best version of yourself, but discovering the greatness within as you take a journey and uh, not only outside, but also take that journey into an inner space. So potential proves that nothing about your past actually defines you, whether it is uh, your past career or your past experience, none of that defines you. Where you start is not where you're going to finish. And your path may be different from everyone else's. So I often say that your past is not your prison. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. And you've got to understand that that freedom simply means that you can explore life differently. And in today, now they have what they call no, uh, norm, n nomadic um, visas. You can be uh, have a nomad visa. And that means that the way the world is evolving now with our technological advancement and you have um, remote offices, that means that even if you want to take your whole office and live in Greece or live in America or live in Bermuda or, or live in Australia or live in Greece, now the borders are being open and you have these bound less a uh, bounderless um, or boundaryless um, abilities to move around this world. And so don't limit yourself and and say that you know it's about brick and mortar. Les Brown says is now about click and order. So you need to understand that if you have a business, you are you don't have to operate your business any longer just in one zip code. You can live anywhere you want. And this is how we're going to take the message of the king and his kingdom. The Bible said, go into all the world and preach the gospel demonstrate the gospel, um, witness to people about the gospel. And those of you who don't have to be tied down to a specific zip code, why don't you explore the world and cross-pollinate as you go? I think most people are in prison more from their past successes than their past failures. I mean, you know, I, I think that failure... Um, is important if you're failing forward and you become like Thomas Addison in trying to discover um, how a light bulb is uh, created. And he was able to say in an interview um, that, you know, I didn't discover uh, that I was a failure. I just discovered ways of not creating the light bulb. And so you've got to be able to be somewhat nomadic when it comes even to your own brain, even to your own thoughts. And you've got to understand just because you failed here, there's, there's, there's a place in God, in yourself, that once you find that place, you will, you will be, connect immediately with your success. I think, I think that we limit God and we limit ourselves and we limit our abilities to fulfill purpose, maximize our potential, when we think that just because we started somewhere, that's where we have to end, end up. And sometimes it takes a city on fire. Sometimes pro prophetically, it takes, and proverbially, it takes God burning down an entire city to get you to move on. And this is what happened to Lot. You gotta get out of here and please don't come back. So sometimes he burns the city down so that you have nothing to go back to. And when we look at how some of us are moved from one place to another, we're often moved in the midst of crisis, in the midst of hardship, 
in the midst of rejection. We're, also, we're moved from one place to another. Paul said, we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken, cast down, but not destroyed, 2 Corinthians 4, 8 to 9. Why? Because God puts pressure on the seed of greatness, and he gives you the opportunity to begin to see that pressure or the opposing forces actually bring life to hidden potential. And it's a great opportunity that God gives us to turn within rather than turn without. And then the last, the last group of people are settlers, and they take on the mentality of Lot. Um, and what I want to challenge you to do is to get rid of settling, get rid of your average mentality. To have an average mentality is to resign yourself to a life of an underachiever. You know, when it comes to your potential, that is to have these things that are unfulfilled and goals and, and aspirations that are unreached. And you are capable of so much more, but the decision is up to you. You can settle if you want. That means that um, you have the opportunity to settle or to, to expand just a little more energy to go from Zor, which means insignificant, to, to ascend into the mountain of influence, of affluence, uh, to, to really uh, take your personal brand to the next level. So that means that whatever you focus on and you truly desire, be it a vision or a dream or a goal, you can do it if you get rid of your average mindset or settling mindset. You have to set your mind to excel, to, 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 to reach a further, to go further, to produce more. And you do this on the, a daily basis. You've got to be able to challenge yourself. You've got to be able to put pressure on yourself you know, I don't always feel like doing what I do. I don't always feel like it. Some days I wake up and I say to myself, I wish, you know, I could live a normal life. But normal is not for me. Common is not for me. Uh, you know, and I want you to know that God is going to give you an opportunity to be an uncommon achiever. You're going to achieve even more than you thought was possible. And, and, and you're going to do it by getting rid of a settler's mindset. A seller's mindset is an average mindset. And an average mindset is the most destructive type of mentality to have because it accepts um, uh, what culture calls uh, good enough. And, and, and average never puts you in a position where you're challenged to expand your horizons, to think outside of the box, to break out of the mediocre state where the clutter of the common live. It is you realizing that the status quo is not for you. You, you don't benchmark your success and prosperity against anyone else. You know, the, the realm of average is where your goals, your dreams, your potential go to die. And I think the realm of average is, is a graveyard that is filled with dr dead dreams, people that have given up on ever accomplishing things in life. You know, where people go and they die with great books that they have never written and great songs that they have never sung and, and great ministries that they have never started and great businesses that they have never built. And so, you know, they settle like lot for good enough. God was giving him an opportunity, an opportunity to go to the mountain, but he settled. And I decree and declare your days of settling is over. Good enough is not good enough for you. The realm of average is not good enough because the realm of average is filled with dream persecutors and, 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 and um, potential assassins that, that they're not afraid of, of, of killing your dreams at blank, uh, point blank range. And they almost 
make it seem like you shouldn't expect uh, more for your life, that, that because they have settled, you have settled. And these are people that are spectators. These are people that are in the bleachers in life. These are people that don't understand that the only lids and limitations are self-imposed. And I want to challenge you. God has given you an opportunity today to remove the lids and your and, and limitations that are either self-imposed or imposed by other people because your future is filled with unlimited possibilities and potential. And so today, I want you to understand that greatness is in your genes. Greatness is in your DNA. Uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Settlers, settlers, they they are 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 people that once were migrators. They were once were trailblazers. They once were pioneers. You cannot be a settler if you weren't a trailblazer or a pioneer. You want you weren't a migrator. Um, but but you get to a place in your life and you just settle. You 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 settle with uh, last year's experience, five years experience, and you know because when 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 you are a pioneer, uh, people will always push back, but you gotta press ahead. The Bible said in our text that the morning arose, and God gave Lot an opportunity that he did not accept. But I decree and declare, tomorrow about this time, God is gonna give you an opportunity and you are not going to settle. Greatness belongs to you. And it not only belongs to you, but I decree that you are gonna have a great life. You're gonna have great opportunities, opportunities given to you. You're going to live in a great house. You're gonna have a great marriage. You're gonna have great children. You're gonna have a great time. You're gonna go on great um, vacations. Why? Because you are gonna remove the lid and limitations. And so when we think about opportunities in the scripture, I just want to remind you, the scripture says that time and chance is given to all of us. Don't take what seems to be mundane and what seems to be an opposition and not take a step back to see the actual opportunities in the opposition. Because most of the time, the opposition is coming from within. It's coming from your own mind, your own brain, which operates by the familiar and the usual. And it doesn't operate by faith and by uh, risk. Your mind does, but your brain does not. And so every single day, I'm gonna challenge you. Have the mind of Christ. Tap into the mind of God so that you live mind over matter. On those days when you wanna give up on your dreams, refuse. On those days when you wanna settle, refuse. On those days when you say, I'm too old to start all over again, refuse. Think of Sarah, think of Abraham, and ask the question, how old was Sarah and Abraham when they had their first child? God is going to give you an opportunity to live the life of your dreams. And it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter how much you've tried, how much energy you put in. What I want you to do today is not to give up on your dreams. Keep pressing ahead. Refuse to be a settler in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us. If God is using this ministry to impact your life in any way, I invite you to join us in reaching others by investing into this kingdom initiative that brings hope, dignity, meaning, purpose to all humanity. You can make a difference as you continue to give to Cindy Trim Ministries at cindytrimministries.org slash give or by downloading our free Cindy Trim app and select Give there. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more empowering teachings like this. And don't forget to share with a friend. As always, it's a pleasure and an honor to do life with you in real time. God bless. 
the Cindy Trim Ministries app just got even better. Dive into the brand new experience right now by updating or downloading the latest version of the app for free in the Apple or Google Play Store. The dynamic home screen keeps you up to date with the latest empowering articles, sermons, live streaming services, and a weekly arrangement of the most inspiring content available anywhere. Watch on-demand messages and begin leading your empowered life group today. Sign up now and receive your how-to handbook and discussion guides for each message. There's more empowerment at every click. Engage in the latest events hosted by Dr. Trim and find out when she's coming to a city near you. We've even made giving easier than ever before. You can donate now by selecting the Give button inside of the app. After creating your profile, giving will be as simple as putting in an amount and selecting Donate. Download the Cindy Trim Ministries app now and begin your journey of empowerment with us today.